Howdy folks, and uh, welcome back to the Saturday Sessions. The Great British Pub Crawl has made it to Banbury. Uh, so we're in Oxfordshire, I believe. Uh, not that we saw an Oxfordshire sign as we came in, but we've not done anything in Oxfordshire so far, so hopefully it's another county that we can tick off. Uh, we've come straight from Nuneaton, so you might notice me wearing the same shirt as the end of the Nuneaton video if you've just watched that one. I promise I do have other clothes, but I've just changed because, you know, sake of it. Right, Banbury. Looks to be decent enough things. Uh, we're in the in what looks to be the town centre, going out that way. And we're going to start with Holly needing a wee. We're going to start with the three pigeons in. Look at this. It's one of those you have to go down the little steps into. Look how beautiful this is. So first stop in Banbury. The other, oh look, beautiful roof and things on there. We had a great time in Nuneaton. Can't wait to get in and see what Banbury's got to offer. Let's kick it off, three pigeons. All I can say about this one is what a start for Banbury. Some of these stone walls, look how beautiful this place is. Uh, watching the, uh, the rugby, uh, the, all the beams and stuff. It just, it, you, you wander around. Yeah, all the ceilings are really low, so it's not made for tall people. Uh, 17th century pub, beautifully kept, beautifully presented. Really good selection of ales and stuff on. Really good beer garden and stuff out the back as well. Yeah, this is a hell of a start for Banbury. Um, I mean, I, I don't know how we're gonna, we're gonna be able to top this one already, because yeah, it's, uh, it's a hell of a place to start. Lovely old pub building, like just the sort we absolutely love. And yeah, if you like historical pubs, you'd love this one. I am already sensing that Banbury is gonna be an absolutely beautiful, stunning old town. But it's just in this little bit that we've got to the first part of the town. That's where we're going in the mirror. But let's have a look at some of these old buildings. It's just absolutely beautiful already. And we haven't even really gone anywhere yet. But our second stop is gonna be the White Horse. Again, look at that. Yeah, the three pigeons, honestly, if you're, you're into your old pubs with little low ceilings and wooden beams and things like that, go in there because that was absolutely banging. So, start number two, then the white horse. Brilliant ale selection on it. Again, lovely stone floors, lovely dog in there. Watching all the, the rugby and stuff. Beautiful old pub. Thriving, bit nice to see. I know it's because the Dingler Rope is on. Uh, but yeah, it's nice to, nice to see it so busy so early. Hopefully it's a, a sign of things to come for the rest of the day in Banbury. Top work so far though. Just, uh, we just met Lou, the, uh, the manager of She's ever so passionate about this place. Uh, could, could literally tell me about it for days. It's such a lovely pub. Back room. This is going to say the same real hours on, five real hours on. The beer festival with ten real hours coming up. This is the function room. Got a lovely little backyard space and stuff out there. It's just a gorgeous, beautiful pub. Thriving, friendly atmosphere, lovely doggy. And just a, just a great, a great place. On to stop number three. Straight across the road, literally, from the White Horse. You can see it in the background. Is the Cromwell. Is the Green King. Judging by the outside of it, look at this. Again, how impressive looking is this building? So, a uh, fully functioning hotel, I believe, with a nice bar area and fantastic outside space. So, uh, so Louise just told us. So, stop number three of our, of our Banbury day, anyway, is the Cromwell. And, uh, yeah, 10 out of 10 for Banbury thus far. Amazing. You can, feel, you can feel the history as soon as you come in this way. It feels like a really old historic building. It's beautiful, like, because he shuts the bar off. Uh, so the old historical cages shutting the bar off from the main uh, hotel and stuff like that at night. So but the Green King IPA that you'd expect to find. Murder Mystery Night coming up as well. That's nice. And I love all these sort of windows like this. The old stone windows with things, things on them. But yeah, what a, what a beautiful place again three out of three what a grand old building uh, a really posh menu and stuff in there you can tell they're a real high-end Greek king uh, establishment but yeah very nice uh, very nice building two doors down uh, is another one dong gun this is the craft union of the town and honestly after straight now I've done I think I've done 50 pubs now in the last two days near enough uh, I've drunk a lot of ale I've had a lot of beers a lot of lagers a lot of ciders I can't wait to get in here and have three blue wickets for six quid <laughs> Bring it on, Craft Union. Didn't find one last night. Missed you. Big pub, uh, going for a palate cleanser. They'd run out of blue wickets. I know you run out of blue wickets. So we uh, ended up with uh, two of the orange and one of the berry between us. Uh, big pub, us left on our own on the uh, on the bar. Uh, during the England-Scotland rugby match, which felt, felt really odd. I said, I don't think that anybody should be left on their own in, a, in the middle of a busy rugby match. So yeah, not the best first impression. Not the most organised craft union one we've been in, but oh well, we move on. Not the not the best impression of a, a craft union uh, I've ever had, but you know we we'll, we we'll move on. So wandering down the, the road opposite, the old auctioneer. Now this one we were told about. So 
there's a doorman stood just inside the door. It's still dead early as well. The doorman stood inside the door, and you go and you, you sort of say to him, oh, can I sit? And apparently they're, they're now more of a restaurant, and don't really like people just going in just for a drink. So you have to sort of say to the door, and they'll radio through to the bar to see if you can go in. And uh, and it does look, we're not going to try, because it does look a bit stuffy, but if, that is, uh, if that's honestly the way they operate and the way they're doing it, it's a, it's a new one on me. I mean, it might work around here, but... Yeah, we haven't got time to, uh, to muck about things like that, so uh, we're going to miss out the old auction here, despite the fact that it's a lovely, beautiful pub, and we'll keep moving on. Fortunately, that we haven't had to walk very far. It's literally just another 100 yards down the road to... I'm pretty sure that we were told that this was Banbury's oldest pub. Correct? Yeah, you're right. <laughs> I'm right. I'm right. Thank you, local person that I don't know. Thank you. Uh, right, so this is Banbury's oldest pub, which is nice. It looks pretty damn stunning from the outside. Look at look how uneven it looks. Look at the roof, look. At the roof it goes, Woo! I could draw pictures like that. Yeah, this looks absolutely stunning. This is another proper real ale pub, and it's called Ye Old Reindeer Inn. So uh, let's get ourselves inside this one. No messing about asking a, a doorman to check and see if we can have a drink, I suppose. Here we go. This is highly impressive, guys. It's really old. Obviously, obviously, being the oldest pub, you would expect to be, but look at how beautiful the beams and things on the ceilings, how beautiful the pub is in general. Uh, local brewery, this, from Hook Norton. Plenty of their own beers and stuff. You on. should ask to try it. On oh, here. Oh, I trust you. I don't <laughs> try things. I'll, uh, I'll just dive straight in. I'll drink it anyway, but I'm sure I shall love it. Yeah, Hook Norton Brewery. So, a lovely, uh, absolute establishment. I'm well looking forward to trying my hooky from Hook Norton Brewery. Uh, and we'll, uh, we'll then go and find the Globe Room uh, we've been told to go and we've got to go and see and go and check out as well. So that must be around the back or around here somewhere. This is so busy. What a lovely pub. It's just walking through the halls and stuff in here. Okay, it just, it just feels historic and feels lovely. So the Globe Room is... Uh, <laughs> Globe Room is that room up there. Uh, it is a, a dining space on the back of the pub. But, I mean, it just looks pretty mega. It's all reserved and uh, so busy. We're not gonna, I'm not going to go and intrude on them. But honestly, yeah, come and see this pub because it's absolutely mint. And this hooky that I had... Very, very good. Uh, I've come outside now into the back. Just look at the beauty of this place. Look at that. So that uh, this room just here is the Globe Room, and there is a story behind. Look at this. this is great, isn't it? So here's the here's the story, and I'll give you the gist of it. So in the early 1900s, uh, Hook Norton Brewery bought this place. Whoever owned it before, the panelling from the Globe Room up there. They tried to sell the wood off. They took the wood down and they found a pistol embedded behind the behind the wooden things in there that was engraved and said, presented to Dick Turpin, uh, 1735 or something, um, at the White Bear Inn. So, they looked into it and it does seem as though Dick Turpin himself was present at the pub in question at that time and the, the pistol could very well have belonged to Dick Turpin. I mean, there's a little bit of history for you, isn't there? There's a, there's a claim to fame. Love a bit of history. Love uh, this is just it's sun, there's nowhere to sit. But it is just it's a wonderful, fantastic pub. I mean up there that's a sixteen twenty four on that. So just uh yeah, f absolutely phenomenal little place this. Loving it. Oh, absolutely incredible. I, mean, I love I love the historical stories and the Dick Turpin thing. The Dick Turpin story is always like it's been something that's fascinated me for years how a guy just used to sort of ride up and down the country and hold people up for a thing and he was considered like a hero and a legend rather than an absolute wrong and but hey you know that pistol story is impressive though right uh walk down the down the street again we've only been about two on and you come to the wine vaults now a beautiful old looking pub uh, i don't think it just does what sure it does beer as well but i'll go and find out for you yeah they did beer of course they did but, uh, yeah. beautiful looking bar uh a bit of live music coming later on apparently we won't be here for but yeah what i uh what a nice looking bar area. This is obviously where the live music goes on. Yeah, quite impressed. That's a nice enough little venue. Dead opposite is uh, AKA, they call it for short, right? Also, very garish from the outside. And uh, anybody who's uh, before or knows anything about me whatsoever knows that the only thing in the entire world that I really, really, really don't like, some might say scared of, is balloons. So I'm well looking forward to walking under this absolutely needless balloon arch. Can't wait. The news is I made it safely inside without getting attacked by balloons. So, my heart's still racing, but I made it in, I rushed in. I rushed in and did decent enough selection and stuff on uh, things there. It's quirky in it, I like it. The old, uh, the, the old boar's head and stuff up there, I quite like that. Yeah, it's very, uh, 
very nice. Obviously, do pizzas and stuff in here. It's very modern feeling. Yeah, it, it's different. It's, it's a bit of a break from what else is on this street. So yeah, really, really good little finds. And um, yeah, I'm quite impressed. Once I got past the balloons. And then sort of the, the little square, I suppose you call it, the, the shop. I mean, this is their shopping centre. <sighs> I mean, that's, uh, that's pretty impressive, isn't it? It's pretty beautiful. Uh, yeah, nice looking square and stuff in Banbury as well. So let's move on. Uh, just a little bit past the shopping centre. This one looks a little bit out on its own. Lovely decking area in front of it. Looks very, very slippy tonight. Yes. But I bet in uh, yeah, I bet in summer that's quite good. Uh, called J T Davies. Uh, what year did you say it says on it? 1875. 1875. Feels like I've been out on this pub call since 1875. I can tell you. But yeah, we might as well uh, might as well head off and do this one. This is 1875. You can feel the history, guys. Like really lovely building. Decent enough stuff on and some real ales. Breaks beer. But yeah, it's a, it's a nice enough, uh, nice, uh, the land the bar's very friendly. I'm not entirely sure what this, if you can hear it, I'm not entirely sure what this music's all about, but yeah, it's a, it's a nice pub again, this. That decking area, it wasn't even near as slippy as I thought either. We got in okay. Well, I, I, yeah, it's right, so the apothecary town up next, down Butcher's Road, they shut at eight, and we have literally only just made it and caught them, so they're gonna, uh, he's gonna let us in, show us around, and give us a quick beer, which is lovely. And yeah, they shut at eight, so make sure you know that if you want to come here. So, the apothecary town is just down this Butcher's Road, which is a lovely little, uh, Lovely little street down here. Uh, we've just met the owner. He's a, he's a really nice chap and they've got a lovely doggy. Let's go in and get out of his way quick. Right, my memory's playing tricks on me, but I'm doing really well. So Rob and Karen, who are lovely, absolutely lovely people, and Mally, who is my new best buddy. Uh, honestly, we're close now. I'm not gonna go into that, but we're close now. Honestly, I absolutely adore places like this. And I'm so glad that we actually got here and caught them in and say, but look at some of the stuff that is in here. Look at the beauty. Oh, there's some Vault City in there. Look, we're staying well clear of those tonight. Well clear of those tonight because some of us have got things to do. But this is just this wicked. So they shut at 8 o'clock on a Saturday because Friday's their late night. And it's also, it doubles up as a comedy club. So come with me. Come on a walk with me. Look, look at this though as well. Look how good these are. I can draw like that. No, I, I really can't. I, I might swap my wife for this person in a minute as well. Take her. Yeah, but... Give me less grief. Look at this, set up for the comedy club. So they've had some many, many, many great comedy names in this, including Sarah Millicum, Rod Gilbert, and a few others to, to sort of name, but a few, the attic, the little comedy's in. So it doubles up as a little comedy club, which is wonderful. I have just had, also been gifted from Nothing Bound Brewery, uh, a pale ale from Nothing Bound Brewery, which was absolutely superb. They have a rotating tap in it that is basically just dedicated to Nothing Bound Brewery. Some of the other stuff that they've got on yeah. in here. Neon Raptor is right yeah. down the road from us, yeah. <laughs> look at some of the, uh, the, look at some of that's from the breweries. So this is Nothing Bound, so it's like a rotating tap. These are some of the greatest inventions in the world, these little machines as well. Because you can, yeah, honestly, they, they take so much of the stress and the hassle out of having things, but this, don't be a, yeah, you see it. <laughs> and I can, I can totally see why, yeah, this is earlier, because I, well, actually I don't, because I would have stayed in there all night, we wouldn't have got anything done. So, thanks guys. Oh, 100% we'll be back again. Honestly, this wicked place, come and see it. Right, honestly, uh, Rob and Karen's passion for what they do is unbridled, it really is. What a wonderful pub that is. I get why they shut at eight on a Saturday, because they, they don't get business, they get their business on a Friday, business on a Sunday. Saturdays are not really their bag, and they, they run it themselves, they need a bit of time off. So I totally understand that, I can respect it, but yeah, so grateful to them for letting us in, so glad that we got to see around it, because it is absolutely banging. A wonderful pub, absolutely loved it. Two doors down though is the Bambi Cross. So this is our ninth, I think, stop of the day, Bambi Cross. Very different vibe in here to next door, obviously. Really old pub again, uh, and you can feel again, there's all the old beams, the low ceiling, things like that, which I, which I do like, but this is your classic sort of Foster's Carling, Stella Cores, John Smith's, things like that. You won't find, you won't find a real house off, but it's, it's a nice enough pub. Um, Really friendly, uh, staff and stuff really friendly. They're planning to do Paul Saver and stuff down behind. Paul Saver and stuff down there. Uh, Danny Enns, bit of a soul and Motown, I think she said it was tonight. So, not really my cup of tea, but obviously it works. But every every town needs a bit of variety, and uh, yeah, something like that is a little bit of variety for the towns who have not come across that so far tonight. So, yeah, nice, nice old pub, decent vibe, friendly staff. Beers are not necessarily my cup of tea in here, and I'm a bit beard out on this. Well, so I had some wonderful things next door. Um, Back on the boxes. Doubting myself as to where I did a video in the last one, then, but I did because I got uh, I got up the road and I, I could hear the live music. I you can hear it, but I could hear the live music coming from here. And you know we love a bit of live music, especially after last night in uh, in Nanny and the crew. What a pub that is, by the way. Absolutely loved it. So, coaching horses is up next, and I can already hear the band playing. 
So uh, yeah, uh, this is stop. I think 12 of our day in Banbury thus far. So very much looking forward to the coaching horses. Oh, I absolutely love this. Gear live music, oh yeah. No, I mean, all the, um, the, the same sort of ones that we have up there. What a great bar. We love a bit of live music. The band sounded really, really good in there. Really good covers band. Uh, so we've come around the round little fork in the road and we get to the Wheat Sheaf. Green King. Show by the outside. Uh, beautiful old looking building again though. So very impressed by the, uh, the aesthetics from the outside. Very, uh, we're moving on around the street. But yeah, thus far Banbury is pretty damn good night out. Liking it a lot. As you just saw with the uh, the coaching horses, like sometimes pubs are so busy, I don't really get to film or show you much around the pubs. So sometimes I like it when we get to a place and it's a bit quiet. So this is the witches. They obviously do a bit of live music and stuff. I mean, there's some guitars and stuff up there. It's obviously a sort of a band stage, pool table and things like that. So this is obviously like a really good, intimate little live music room. But when you come through here and just look at, again, some of the, some of the beauty of this place. Low ceilings, beautiful looking pub. And it is actually nice sometimes to get to see around the beauty of some of these pubs when they are a bit quieter. And I've also got some really good stuff on. It's a Green King, so you've got the Abbott on, as you would expect to find. And the rest of the bits. Yeah, it's a. Oh! Hey, he's got. He's a. Yeah, dark one in the corner. It's a, yeah, this is a, a toss to be able to wander around them sometimes when they are a little bit quieter, so. Really good. I've got some level head in here as well. Love a level head. It was a proper old school rock pub that I absolutely like. This might be the biggest tragedy I've seen in pub work, in pub terms in a long time so building says 1537 on the outside of it big sign in the middle still says the look at this and it's now an estate agents honestly honestly Banbury how can you let that happen that that is criminal yeah that's now an estate agents what an absolute waste of what obviously was at some point an absolutely phenomenal looking pub. Oh, Banbury. You've let me down. So I'm still shaking my head from that. It's criminal that being allowed to be in the state agents when that, honestly, what a building. But, the exchange, the weather spoons. So this is, uh, this is Banbury. Bunch of, uh, bunch of very noisy lads outside smoking, trying to be as heard as they possibly can. They're all young lads, aren't they? Uh, all trying to be as, as loud as they possibly can. There's also girls outside drinking on the street with, uh, with pint glasses. Uh, pint glass on the outside of the pub, I'm not sure about that. Uh, but this looks so lovely. This looks a lovely building again. Just, uh, just over there, like glass bottles and, and pint glasses. Um, that's a new one on me. I'm pretty sure that door staff normally tell you not to take your glasses out onto the, the street. So, yeah, that's a that's a slightly new one on me. I don't know, we'll go in. Uh, yeah. Uh, Weber spends carpet photo incoming, Facebook. I honestly, I feel really, really sorry for the staff in here because there, there are no door staff. Yeah, apparently they they can they had them up till December, cancelled them in January because it's quiet and haven't put them back on yet. I mean, we're near at the end of February. Um, it's a Saturday night. It's a town centre pub on a Saturday night, and you can't be not having door staff. On. Some of the yeah, it's for the, it's for the younger crowds as well. Some of the, honestly, some of the staff we, we sat here, we sat right by the close of the bar. Like, so watched some customers sort of be rude as hell to the bar staff. They shouldn't be dealing with that crap because they should have doormen on. But deal with that. But yeah, I, I pointed out the glasses on the street to one of the lads who works here who brought our drinks over and he instantly went and dealt with it and he got them in and he said no. Oh, and that was lovely to see. But I said, it's not their job. They shouldn't have to deal with this crap. And whoever spoons like, whoever the area manager is in this bit, needs to have a little bit of a word with himself and say, come on, get that sorted. They shouldn't have to deal with this crap. It's not, it's not their job. It's not their job to deal with unruly customers and rudeness. Because they're doing a fine job as it is. The carpet, however. <laughs> the carpet is horrid. Get that changed. Want to see something really unique? So we're on the ground floor. Look at this. There's the toilets! Ground floor toilets in Weatherspoons. Saving grace of this place, is you? I honestly feel mega sorry for the staff in that Weatherspoons because they, they're under pressure. The customers are rude. There's no doorman to help them out whatsoever. So we walked out again. Even after the lad had gone and dragged a load of pink lemon with their glass bottles, another lad stood out there brazenly drinking a glass bottle right on the, right on the street. Can't do that. Help, help these guys out. Get them a doorman. Whoever the area manager is that has literally okayed that to not have doorman on Saturday night, mental to me. But that's Banbury Cross, apparently. It's a, it's a nice little bit on the, uh, on the roundabout. It. I bet years and years ago, I bet this was a square where we used to gather and, and all sorts, long before these roads were here and 
stuff like that, but yeah, it's very nice. So we're going around to the Swan, up uh, up this way, so I'll see you in a second. So yeah, uh, 14th stop in Banbury, another old, beautiful looking pub, this one, is the Swan. Sounds, uh, sounds vibing, so busy and vibing, I'm up for it, and plus, there's not a single person out here on the street with a glass. It's always a good sign. Swan up next then. Yeah, it's vibing. Uh, live singer on. Holly's, Holly's buying a drink. Share this on camera. Whee! I take my turn. Holly's buying a drink. Uh, yeah, live singer on. It's nice. Cool. Pallet. Singer's out of there. In the corner. Yeah, absolutely. Packed out pub. Lots of small stuff in here. That's the old uh, line up with the large stuff. Not, uh, not a real ale pub that I can see. Uh, so, I don't know, oh, I'll it, oh, I'll it, but, nice old pub again. Uh, yeah, again, really enjoyed it in there. Thought it, was a, thought it was a great place. Our final pub of the night is going to be 15 for Banbury. So 15 is not a bad innings, especially considering we did five before we left Nuneaton and then earlier today. So 20 in total today, 15 for Banbury. We're going to finish with this beauty though, look at this. This is called a church house. That's a looking, looking building, that, isn't it? So, Church House is our final stop of the night. Uh, we're going here, see what it's like. We'll have a chat before we go and find a kebab. I'm so ready for a kebab. I've done 60 odd pubs now in the last uh, three days. I don't know why I do this stuff. So I've just come back from out, uh, from inside because um, I want to take you on a journey of discovery. So it's called a church house. Because up, uh, <laughs> for 70 years, as you, you might expect, it was a, a religious worship place, a uh, house in Banbury and my God, it's beautiful. I want to, I want to, I want you to get the full effect of this. So I'm going to turn you. You saw her outside now. You saw how beautiful this was. So come on a, come on a journey of discovery with me and just see it. So you walk through the doors and look at this absolute beauty of a hallway. When you ever walk into a pub and the hallway is as beautiful as this, these stone steps as well. Look how beautiful this is. But you come then into the main sort of room that it would be. And just look at the grandeur of this. The, the, the church things, the whole vibe of it is just exquisite looking, isn't it? What a beautiful place. They do cocktails, they do, uh, they do a pina colada, but I, uh, I didn't see that until after I'd ordered, but kind of handfuls of other stuff as well. But this one, honestly, this one is all about the beauty of the aesthetics and the bar and everything that we're in. What a way, what a way for us to, uh, to sign off in Banbury. I'm so glad we didn't miss this because we might have done. What a way to, uh, what a way to sign off and round off the day because 15 done in Banbury. What do you think of Banbury? Quite liked it actually. Quite liked it? Yeah. She quite liked it. To be honest, that's as excited as she gets. So, take that as a win. Uh, I, I always do. Whenever I say, like, do you like me? Like, she, yeah, I quite like it. It's, it's, I take that as a win. So, it. Banbury's been, Banbury's been great. Um, we're gonna go find a kebab, finish our drink first, obviously. But uh, as always, guys, thank you so much for watching. Uh, it's been three days on the road for me, two days for this one. Uh, we are very much ready for some food and to get back to our hotel and to bed. Not for any kind of fun stuff, because it's just gonna be sleep, but you know, uh, yeah. Uh, cheers for watching, guys. Uh, and as always, I'm not gonna do the big mixed food catchphrase again. As always, we'll see you very soon.